I can't be the only one that has a big mess on the notes app on my phone. If I'm talking to someone and they give me a recommendation, plop, the first thing I'll do is write it down. If I think of an idea, boop, open up my notes app and write it down. If I want to write down an email or a text before sending it, but I don't want it to show as like typing, first thing I'll do is I'll open up my notes app and write it down. And then when I finally want to use something that I wrote down, I go into my notes app and guess what? I can't find it or I have no idea what I wrote down. Well, actually that used to happen to me, but ever since I started incorporating the para method, my notes app is super organized and I can actually find the things I need. The para system basically teaches you to divide everything, everything you want to capture into four buckets projects, areas, resources, and archives. But before I explain what each bucket is and how it works, I have to give you some background information so that you can declutter your notes app and have it clean and organized like I do now. Everything that I learned is from the book, Building a Second Brain, which explains how we can use technology to improve our memory, reach our goals faster, and stay productive, which for me is super important as I run a business while traveling full time. Like there's a lot on my plate. The book says this, when you transform your relationship to information, you will begin to see the technology in your life, not just as a storage medium, but as a tool for thinking. Like a bicycle for the mind, once we learn how to use it properly, technology can enhance our cognitive abilities and accelerate us towards our goals faster than we could ever imagine on our own. So the solution for information overload and having a mess on our phones app is building a second brain. In my case, my second brain is my notes app on my phone because it's always the first thing I grab, but the system actually applies to anything that you want to use as your second brain. However, the book does recommend that you do do it digitally. Think of your second brain basically like a notebook, a GPS, a journal, and a toolbox all in one. Diego Forte, the author of Building a Second Brain, breaks this process down into four steps, and it's actually very easy to remember using the code acronym. Knowing this code system will then make it easier to implement the para buckets, which we'll get into next. Step one is to capture. We're all receiving so much information. It's all around us, but what actually matters to you, not what matters to your friends or what your coworkers think is important. Step one is basically filtering out what's worth it and what isn't. Keep in mind, no one will have access to your second brain. So you shouldn't feel bad for that coworker that's giving you recommendations that you didn't even ask for to begin with. The goal is to capture what's going to help you solve a problem in the future, maybe save time or even provide insight on something later on. That's what you need to write down. We all have certain things that come up again and again in our heads. Those common topics are the perfect things that you should keep in mind when deciding what to capture in your second brain. For me, as someone who creates content, one of the main topics that lives in my head rent-free is of course content ideas. So I'm always on the lookout for new ideas to jot down. Now we go to step two, which is organizing. This is where it gets good and what helped me get my life together. When I was cleaning out my notes app after doing this step, I literally found Tumblr quotes that I had written down in high school. And here's where the para system comes in. The goal is to divide everything you want to keep handy into four buckets, projects, areas, resources, and archives. Projects are those things you're currently working on and have an end date or final resolution. For example, at work, it could be delivering a project to ABC client or finishing designing a website. And in a personal aspect, it can be to remodel your kitchen or book your next trip. Like once you get it done, it's done and that chapter is closed. Areas are topics you're involved in long term. For example, growing your business, improving your health habits, working on your parenting skills, all those things. Think of this section as the main pillars you revolve your day-to-day -day around. 
resources are important information you've come across that you'd like to remember, but it doesn't belong in a project or in a specific area. For example, the best restaurants to eat around New York or those styling tips that come up on Instagram that we always save because we want to look back at them, but we never actually do. The last folder is archives. Think of this as your brain dumpster, where you put completed projects, areas, things that are no longer active, and resources that aren't relevant at the moment, but might be sometime in the future. Using the Paris system to keep your second brain organized is a game changer because you are sorting information based on how it's going to be used in the future, not where it came from, which is usually how we tend to write things down and why we never end up going back to it or understanding what we wrote down. Of course, this is totally up to you, but in order to keep my notes app even more organized, I sorted it using the para acronym, but then I changed it into titles that I actually use. So for projects, I made a folder titled business. This is where I keep all the information handy for things I'm currently working on. I did try doing this on Notion and it did work, but I found myself going back to the notes at first when I wanted to write things down. So I just stayed on the notes app and I find it very easy to use and super helpful that you can create folders inside categories to keep it more organized. So inside the business category, I have YouTube, partnerships, and then agency things and admin things. You can also pin the most important ones at the top. So once you start filling yours in, I highly recommend you pinning two to three of the most common ones. Now under areas, my main category is books. If you've been following me, you know I'm always reading and my book list keeps growing by the minute. So that's my go-to place to keep track of new books that I hear about. And then I mark them as I start reading them. Next, I have gym and a personal folder, which is technically my resource category because it's where I keep my routines written down and then personal recipes, my sizes for ordering clothes online. That's a great hack that I recommend everyone to do because so many pages have different sizes. So what I do now is I keep my measurements written down and when I order something, I look at the sizing chart to make sure that I'm ordering the right size instead of just guessing if in that store I'm a small or a medium and it makes the process a lot easier, trust me. I also have links to my favorite meditations, important websites that I wanna store, and I also have my bucket list of all the things I wanna check off under my personal tab. This is just my way of organizing it, which has really, really helped me. You can do it however works for you as long as you're following the four bucket system, projects, areas, resources, and archive. Now, going back to the code acronym, C-O-D-E. After you've captured and organized the information, step three is to distill it. This means to make the information yours. It can be by rewriting it in a way that you understand or making it relevant to what you think you're going to be using it for or even highlighting the most important parts. There's nothing worse than knowing you wrote something down and then going back to look at it and not even understanding what you wrote down. So now when I write things down, I double check and make sure that it actually makes sense to someone that knows nothing about what's going on because my notes back then would be like no title, no nothing on the right hand corner next to the gas station, ask for Mark. So clearly that didn't help me because when I would look back at it, I had no idea what I was even talking about. Distilling the information is how we're going to solve that issue. I recommend highlighting, formatting the text, color coding, and making notes on top so you know exactly what the information you're writing down is about. The final step on code, step four is to express. And this was probably one of my favorite parts of the book because we all need that motivation kick every once in a while. This means building and putting that information into action. How often do we have tons of ideas and dreams written down that are just sitting in there? And we're always saying, I'll get to it later or making excuses for why the time's not right right now. The goal is to have a second brain, keep it organized, but also make sure that you're bringing everything to life. And that's really something that I needed to hear. This book says this, we spend countless hours reading, listening, and watching other people's opinions about what we should do, how we should think, and how we should live, but make comparatively little effort applying the knowledge and making it our own.
I hope this video helps you organize your thoughts and keeps your notes app decluttered so you can spend more time on bringing those ideas that you have written down to life. Don't forget to send this video to a friend that has a mess on their phone and I'll leave the book link down below in the description. I always make videos on the best books I'm reading, so make sure to stick around and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.